Hello students! Welcome to our online class. It's me, Ma'am Jen, and I will be your teacher in Heli 6. To start with our lesson, let's begin with a prayer. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord, as we all say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Father, we thank you for everyone gathered here now. We thank you that you know each one of us by name and have cause us to walk with you. We say that we are dependent on you and our trust is in you completely. As we surrender ourselves with adoration, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the gift of life that you lavish upon each one of us. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. Lord, we thank you for everyone who are present today. We pray that you would give us great inspiration as we share what you have placed in our hearts. We pray that you would fill us with courage and give us your peace. We pray that you will keep us safe and spare us from the threat of the virus. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. In today's lesson, I'm going to discuss with you Lesson 1, Planting Trees and Fruit-Bearing Trees. Planting trees requires careful study of various factors to ensure its proper adaptability and growth. Important factors in planting trees and fruit-bearing trees are to be considered to achieve success in this industry. Planting trees. Having trees around is beneficial to everybody. Trees provide a lot of benefits that people can enjoy. There are different types of trees. Some trees bear fruits and others do not. Some fruit-bearing trees are also grown as source of lumber for commercial purposes and for the shade they provide. Benefits of planting trees Trees are woody plants that typically have a single upright stem or trunk. They are abundant in the country. They play important roles to man in many ways. First, planting trees helps in soil formation, soil enrichment, and the protection of soil against excessive erosion. Second benefits, trees observe the heat of the sun and cool the air. They filter dust from the air and add oxygen and moisture to the air. For the third benefits of planting trees, they give shade, fruits, fuel, and sometimes medicinal substances. Another benefits of planting trees, they are grown for different purposes. They are significant source of logs, lumber, veneer, and pulp, which are the principal products from the forest. Fruit-bearing trees are sources of food that could help meet the nutritional needs of the family and the entire community. Lastly, trees such as Nara, which is known for its durability, are made into furniture and floorings. The apitong, mahogany, mulave, and tangle are good for lumber. The balete and the kasha trees serve as shades in the locality or parks. Common commercial species of trees thriving in the Philippines. As the country began to industrialize, forests were cleared out for timber and for space to develop. To refresh these areas, the government and many private organizations have initiated different greening and other environmental programs. Here are the common commercial species of trees thriving in the Philippines. 
First is the apitong. Apitong is a medium-sized to large resinous tree growing to a height of about 40 meters. Trunk is straight, cylindrical, branchless up to 30 meters and up to 125 centimeters in diameter. Flowers are large, about 5 centimeters long, rose-colored, and fragrant. Another common commercial species of trees we have, white laan. The species is propagated by seeds only. The wood is used for general construction, furniture, and cabinet making, boat planking, mining timbers, and paper making. It is also used to make boxes, crates, utensils, and veneer plywood. Tangle It is a large tree endemic to the Philippines threatened by habitat loss. It has a straight cylindrical buttress bowl. Nara tree. Why Nara tree is the national tree of the Philippines? The Philippine national tree is the sturdy and durable Nara, which symbolizes the Filipino people's indomitable spirit and strength of character. The Nara tree was officially declared as a national symbol by General Frank Murphy along with the Sampaguitas Declaration in 1934. Hello there, my name is Nara Seedling, and welcome to Earth, where life happens. And this so-called life is composed of different living things, from cells to bacteria, to insects, to animals and plants. And each one of them plays a particular role in the web of life, especially us trees. We trees have been around for millions of years. We provide shade, shelter, and food to animals and plants like us. We also take in carbon dioxide and produce oxygen for animals to breathe. But how am I different from my relatives as a tree? As you can see, I am still just a seedling. But when I grow up, I will become as handsome as my dad. See, my sunny yellow flowers will soon blossom and produce a sweet fragrance. And by the way, my flowers are essential source of nectar or pollen for honey production in farms. Our friends from the lower rivers will also need a tree like me to stabilize soils and maintain water quality for the habitats of our marine friends. But how do I stabilize soils? I was born with nitrogen fixing capability. I will fertilize that sterile soil simultaneously so that other plants, flowers, and trees can share the space I use. We could live in harmony! Great, isn't it? I will also be developing a large firm trunk in the future combined with wide canopy and drooping branches to serve as a shade for the people and as a windbreaker which will be able to stand against strong winds and even typhoons especially here in the Philippines. My water absorption capability is superb due to my shallow root system and will be ready to absorb huge amounts of water when rainy season comes to help prevent floods on low level grounds especially in Metro Manila. And since I inhale carbon dioxide and exhale oxygen, I'll also be able to reduce air pollution in the city while serving as a landscape decoration when trained properly along avenues and open areas together with abundant fragrant yellow flowers. And last but not the least, my main and best future feature when I grow up is my timber. My species produce the best timbers in the world because they are highly durable rarely attacked by termites, and lasts fairly long. The demand for us is high primarily because of our timbers. We are high-class species, that's for sure! But here comes the problem. The IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, already included us in their 2012 red list as vulnerable species, which means we are now endangered and the possibility of becoming extinct is nearing. You don't want to let your national tree vanish, right? So what are we waiting for? Take the necessary steps now to protect and help us prosper again, so I and my family will be able to produce again those top-of-the-class timbers in which the Filipino people are proud of without worrying about our condition. Gihu is another common commercial species of trees. 
Gio is a large Philippine timber tree of the family Dipterocarpaceae, having a strong heavy hardwood with a striking figure and moderately fine texture. Wood is beautifully grained, reddish brown and very durable. Highly preferred material for construction requiring strength and durability such as houses, bridges, furniture, shipbuilding, and building constructions. Red Laan It is a large tree attaining a height of about 50 meters and a diameter of about 200 centimeters. It is a strongly buttressed and with straight cylindrical bowl. Its leaves are alternate, smooth, dark green above, hairy along the nerves beneath, and oblong in shape. Red Laan is a valuable export of sound timber. Yakal is another common commercial species of trees. Yakal is a medium to large tree about 25 to 30 meters tall. Its wood is hard and dark brownish yellow. Branchlets are rather slender, blackish and slightly hairy. Successful Orchard Growers in the Philippines An orchard is an international plantation of trees or shrubs that is maintained for food production. Orchards comprise fruit or nut producing trees which are generally grown for commercial production. Most orchards are planted for a single variety of fruit. The first successful orchard growers in the Philippines is Benjamin Lau. He is also known as Uncle Ben in Barangay Eman, Bansalan, Dabao del Sur. Before, he used to work in Bureau of Immigration until he realized that his passion is into farming. He inherited a 5-hectare piece of land from his parents and decided to develop it into a farm. Due to his determination to succeed and his love for farming, he developed his land into an organic farm. Many coconut tree crops are planted on his land. Those coconut trees inspired him to conduct a lot of research on what he could make out of his land's produce. With the help of the public and private sectors such as the Philippine Coconut Authority or the PCA, he realized that there are other products aside from what copra coconut tree crops can offer. He learned the potentials of coconut sugar and coconut syrup production. In 2015, his farm known as Lao Integrated Farms Incorporated was one of the finalists at the Ernst and Young Entrepreneur of the Year in the Philippines. His farm produces coconut sugar and coconut syrup which are exported to markets in the United States, Australia, United Kingdom, and other European countries. His farm also introduced and exported coconut-based teriyaki dip sauce. His farm created a big impact on the community as he provides job to many people. Another successful orchard growers in the Philippines is Jaime Matabang. Inspired by other successful calamansi growers, Jaime Matabang decided to buy grafted calamansi plants from Talisay, Batangas to have them planted on his one hectare piece of land. According to him, the calamansi can bear fruits two to three years from planting and can be grown in four types of climates as long as there is a well-distributed rainfall throughout the year. He also said that one good thing about calamansi farming is that does not need much caring unlike other fruit-bearing trees. Aside from the usual watering and fertilizing, the calamansi crops are just sprayed once in a while, then they just leave it there. Pests and diseases in calamansi crops are easy to spot, like the zigzag marks, cats, rugged edges, which indicate that the citrus is infested with the citrus bark borers. His farm yields are sold to the market and to other manufacturers who process beverages, syrups, concentrates, juices, preserves, jams, candies, and others. David Jackson and Rosa Magsaysay Rosa Farm, known as a producer of the best varieties of carabao mangoes and organic fruits and vegetables, is located in the province of Sambales. This 12.5 hectare farm was founded in 1920 by the couple David Jackson and Rosa Magsaysay. Before, it was developed as a rice field which was preferred to as Linoron. 
the name of the nearby river. During the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991, the rice field was totally devastated and buried in deep ash. The grandchildren of David and Rosa rehabilitated the farm and began to develop off the mango orchard. By 2011, the farm came to be known as Rosa Farms, managed by Ding and Nelda Solveta. Grover Rosette He is a farmer who has rags to riches story when he pushed through his passion in planting cocoa trees. He never expected that these cocoa trees will give him a comfortable life. Before engaging into planting cocoa trees, he was a postman wherein he received a moderate wage. Now, he is earning 50 times more than his previous job. He began his cocoa orchard by managing 50 trees. It eventually increased into 100 trees, then 3,000 trees, and now with 15,000 more scattered in different places. Sinan Bakani he was the former head of the Department of Agriculture during the presidency of Corazon Aquino. He was also the former country manager for the Dole Philippines in Costa Rica. Due to his broad knowledge in agriculture, he is now the CEO of De La Puerta Incorporated, one of the largest banana exporters in the Philippines. With his determination to help his community in Mindanao, he converted the vast land into a banana plantation. Now, La Fuerte Incorporated is able to produce 5 to 6 million boxes of Cavendish bananas which are exported to Middle East and other countries in Asia. The company uses this tagline, We excel because we care. His company does not only look forward to produce world-class products but to care and value their hard-working farmers. Factors to consider in selecting the location of the orchard. Determine the likelihood of the plant trees to successfully grow by checking with the Bureau of Plant Industry. Choosing the right location is important of planting trees. The following are some factors to consider in selecting the location of the orchard. Land topography, soil, drainage, exposure of the tree farm, climate, the plant species, and nearness to the road and market. 